Hi, and welcome to part six of my intermediate PowerShell tutorial series. Today, we'll be taking a look at JSON and using APIs. I figured I'd do both of those in the same video uh, since we wanted to look at JSON files and APIs. Uh, we'll, we'll be giving back a JSON data, so I figured we might as well do both of those in the same video. So at first, we'll look at how to use a JSON file. And I already have a JSON file here uh, for my employees. It has the same data as my CSV file. And then we'll be taking a look at how to convert our CSV file from the last video into a JSON file. And then we'll be taking a look at some of the APIs and the commandlets that help us get that API data. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. So the first thing we're always going to want to do is just reference this employees file here. So I'm just going to create a variable. We're going to call it JSON file path, and then we're just going to link to that here. And JSON files always end in a .json. So let's go ahead and let's take a look to see uh, what this looks like here. So if we do a get content, with our path here. Now this is gonna look quite ugly. Uh, we do see that we do see all the data, but it still has all the uh, quotations and all of this JSON syntax. So what we're actually gonna to wanna to do is we're actually gonna to wanna to pass that into another commandlet called convert from and then JSON. And then if we run this here, we're going to see that we get a slightly different looking. And this is because I've put in um, put in a few levels into my JSON file, which this it doesn't do automatically when we're going to be converting it. Uh, but I figured to give you guys a nice example, in case you ever do get different depths in your JSON file, that you guys will be able to parse it properly. So if we actually just set this here to um, JSON data, and then what we can do here to get our employee data is if we do JSON data dot, and we could do a dot employees. And now we can see here that we actually just get our same employee data like we did in our CSV files. We'd be able to assign this to a variable called employee data typo there and then we would simply be able to loop through this data just like we did with the csv files in a for loop and then iterate through them and do some commands or some requests based on this data and that's pretty much it for really reading from a JSON file. It's fairly simple. You do have to use two commandlets in this case because there is no import JSON. You do just have to do the get content import the entire file um, as a text file, basically, and then convert it from JSON. And then you'll get all of this data. So what we're going to want to do is now is see how we can create these JSON files a little bit easier. Because if you are in a position where maybe you have tons of different data files and you, you guys are all moving towards converting all those into JSON and moving them to a different system, because uh, you just want to have a very common file structure, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that here. So if we do, if we put in our CSV file path here, and then we're just going to set that to one of our CSV files. And mine is going to be comma delimited. We do CSV employee data. We're going to do the import dash CSV. Now we're going to specify our delimiter, which is a comma. And then we are going to go ahead and actually import this. And we're going to just see how the data looks. And we're going to see that it looks very similar to how the JSON file looked like after we converted it. 
So now all we need to do is actually take the CSV employee data, pipe that to a commandlet called convert to JSON. So notice how before we were converting from JSON, now we're converting to JSON. And then if we run this line here, we're gonna see that we get a very similar structure to our file that we had, uh, just without the extra depth there. And then we can actually just do an out file, which is gonna output this to a file. And then we can put that there to an employees youtube.json. And if we run that here, we will actually see that we do have a JSON file that has the exact same data as our CSV file. So that's how you would convert your existing data files into JSON. And now there's um, very cool APIs that you can use uh, to make your everyday life easier. And some of them just kind of give you some cool data back. And so what I did for this here is I actually found this article um, by Victoria Berquist on Medium here. That's just 18 fun APIs for your next project. So I just went ahead and just picked one here, which is the rest countries. Um, so that's the one I'm going to be using. I'm going to put a link to both of these in the description. Uh, so if you guys want to try out some APIs, uh, these ones are easy to use, don't really require any specific knowledge, and they're quite well documented and they're just fun to use. Um, so I'm going to take all countries API uh, URL here. And the first command that we're going to look at is just the invoke web requ request commandlet. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at a different commandlet that kind of makes our life easier. Uh, but we're just going to be showing you both. This way you can see multiple different ways of doing it here. So we're going to be doing an invoke web request. We're going to be passing in the URI of our API. So if we run this here, you're going to see that we do get a status code and content and a bunch of other stuff. But really, our two main things that we're going to be looking at are going to be the status code and the content. And most API documentation, you'll see the status code for either a success or a failure. The failures, there might be multiple different types of codes that can give you why it failed. Uh, in this case, 200 was a successful API request. And then content gives us all the countries. So if we do, if we store this into a variable here called uh, result, and then what we can do is we can do the dollar sign result dot content. And here we can see that we get really, really ugly data back. It's not really usable, uh, very hard to read. So what we can do is we can actually pipe this to convert from JSON. And if we do this here, we actually see that we get very nice um, country data here where we could actually parse this just as if we had imported it from a CSV file or if we had imported it from a JSON file. So we'd actually be able to store this here, country data. And then we're just going to store that there. And then let's see if we wanted to do country data. And then we wanted to filter where our object. And then we do have a country name here as an option. So we're going to put name. And we're going to put equals. And we're just going to put in Canada there. And we're just going to look it up here. And we get all of the country data for, for Canada. So. Pretty simple to do uh, with the invoke web requests, about three lines uh, to really start to get to filter down to the country that you'd like. You could always use a different API. They do have APIs here to specify the country directly in the API request, um, but we just want to import all the countries this way. We can simply make one API call, get all the countries maybe, and uh, do some later processing instead of invoking multiple API requests. The other commandlet here that we can use is actually invoke rest method. Now invoke rest method is probably the commandlet you're going to want to use 
uh, for all your API needs. Because uh, what you can do with this one here is you can actually pass the method that you want to use. So this could be either your get, your post, your delete method, and then your URI, which again is going to be the same as the invoke web request URI. And by default, it does pass to just the get uh, method. So we're just going to keep it all the same here. And if we invoke this method, we're going to see that we actually get the countries directly. So we can actually assign the country data to this invoke rest method. And then if we looked at the country data where Canada, we actually get our data back right away. So the invoke rest method already does the converting from JSON. So in my opinion, I would always just use invoke rest method. This way it just saves you the work from having to convert from JSON. But if for some reason you do have to use the invoke web request, just remember to convert from JSON if it does um, give you back JSON data. And that is how you use uh, JSON files in PowerShell and how you could query APIs um, using PowerShell and go through the data uh, for use in your script. In the next video, I'll be looking at XML data. And then after that, um, we will be looking at creating our first project in PowerShell. So there's going to be quite a few videos coming up. Um, I'm going to try to keep them short. It's just going to be a different tutorial series. And we're going to be working on the project from the first video all the way to the last. It will probably be about, um, I would assume, 10 to 15 videos for that project. We're going to be taking a look at automating Active Directory with our employee file. And I will see you on the next video. Please like and subscribe.